for those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Episode number 286 uh, of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, the, what is it, the 12th of March. 12th is of it the March. 12th? Yeah. Isn't it? it now is. you're making me wonder. <laughs> She's like, oh, <laughs> quick, a calendar. Somebody quick, give me a calendar. And I think I got a computer oh, in front yeah, of me. <laughs> Look at that. It's the 12th, the 12th. according to the computer. <clears throat> Phew. 2013. So if you're watching this in 2017 and thinking, it's not March the 12th, now you understand. Abigail Smith. (laughs) Abigail Smith, how are you doing? Good. Excellent. How are you? Doing well. I'm doing awesome. Feeling a lot better this week. Thank you, folks. Yeah. How's everybody doing in the chat room? Nice to see you. Rev D. Jenk. Dave Maydew. Jot. All of our folks watching us on YouTube tonight, Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, through where else are you watching from? You're watching through uh, Miro Internet TV. If you're watching after the fact, you're watching on Blip.tv, uh, just straight through YouTube, uh, First Run.tv, off of our website, Category 5.tv, Roku. Have I left anyone out? I know I have. We're everywhere, folks. It's a big list. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's so good to see you, everybody. People watching on our mobile website. Using m.cat5.tv to access the show. How cool is that? So watching on your mobile while you're driving around, accessing it through your mobile internet. Cool stuff. Abigail, what do we got coming up tonight? All right. Coming up in the newsroom, Intel has released the first public version of the Intel graphics drivers for Linux. Expect major delays at the border of SimCity. Ooh. It's official. Ubuntu GNOME Remix joins the Ubuntu family. No way. And, yes way. And, wow. turn your iPhone into a 3D display for under $40. We're <laughs> three minutes, 20 seconds in, folks, and there is the first inappropriate laugh. <laughs> we were waiting for it. But stick around, because these stories are coming up later in the show. Chris Reich, you know what to do. New Clay. <laughs> Who else is joining us? Uh, anybody brand new here tonight joining us in the chat room? Fantastic to have you here. And uh, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, Chris Reich, buddy. Uh, a lot of people that are joining us for the first time tonight. Nice to have you here. Uh, people hearing of us through uh, our syndicate, firstrun.tv, and uh, some of the other platforms that, uh, that we're new to. Um, so great to have you here. Let us know how you're how you're watching, where you're from, and uh, and how you found us as well. We love to hear from you. Uh, you can go to cat5.tv/ask, and uh, you can submit a comment there now. Thank you very much, everybody, for your request for that cool feature on our website. What's happening this Sunday, Ab- Abigail? I don't know Abba. what's happening on Abba. Sunday. Abs. Sunday is is going to be an amazing time, especially if you are a reasonably local viewer or an extremely rich viewer who has a <laughs> private jet. Because here in Barrie, we have a meet and greet with Category 5, the crew. People are going to be uh, at Wiki's Pub, 8 o'clock p.m. Live music is going to be provided by none other than the infamous Eric Kidd. There's no entrance charge, nothing to get in the door. Uh, just come in, have a drink, have uh, some dinner, late dinner, whatever, snack, and join us at Wiki's Pub, uh, which is on Burton Avenue in Barrie, Ontario. So if you're in the area, make sure you uh, you stop on by 8 o'clock Sunday night. Uh, you can get 
more information, cat5.tv slash Facebook if you're a Facebook user, or cat5.tv slash G plus if you're on Google Plus. And make sure you, uh, you say whether you're coming. Cool. Sounds fun. Tonight we are finally doing it. We've planned it out. We've talked about it. We've worked out the details. Tonight, <coughs> pardon me, we are building that photo booth. I'm so excited. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Do I look excited? I'm like, I'm so <laughs> excited. <laughs> no, but really. <laughs> it's awesome. She's, it's awesome. This is her excited, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. I'm just having trouble showing my excitement. Okay. Anyways. (laughs) I just figured I'd give her a sec. Uh, We've received a lot of new viewer registrations this this week, Abigail. I think uh, a lot of you have started registering just because we've been introducing some cool new features. One of those on our website, you can actually receive the show by email. Nice to see so many people who have signed up. Uh, specifically to receive that feature, make sure you go to our website, category uh, category5.tv, and uh, you can register right there on the website. It's totally free, and you can then subscribe to some of those cool features like being able to receive it by email uh, every single week. So uh, nice to have everybody joining us that uh, is a new registrant on our website. Uh, Very cool. And also uh, linuxtechshow.com is our new YouTube channel. Check that out. What were you going to say? Oh, it's just... How does that work? What, uh, linuxtechshow.com? Is that what you mean? Thanks to your YouTube? Yeah, it goes to the YouTube channel, but it's a specific channel designed. It's not the full show. It's just clips. Oh, okay. So little itty-bitty clips. They could be five minutes long. They could be 20 minutes long, but they're not the full hour. Oh, cool. It's just specific topics. So if you want to zone in on a particular topic, for example, tonight we're going to be building this photo booth. So, you know, when it's up on linuxtechshow.com, you can watch just that segment. You can share it with people mm-hmm. and uh, and follow through that way. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. And Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, Abigail. Uh, You can send in your postcards. We love to receive them. Uh, Category5 Technology TV. uh, Mail them to P.O. Box 29009 in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. L4N7W7. We've got to take a really quick break. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. It's Category 5.TV. John, thank you. Greetings to our viewers on Justin.TV, on Ustream.TV. So good to have you here as well. And uh, everyone else watching from all around the world, check out our website, www.category5.tv. So, Abigail, we started talking about building a photo booth specifically for your wedding reception. Yes. Kind of an exciting thing. What happened? I mean, you, you, you can rent a photo booth. So why not just rent one? Because it's at least $1,000. What? <laughs> thousand just $1,000, you know. Okay, so let's see what it's going to cost us to actually do it ourselves. We've kind of run over some of the numbers ourselves um, and, and figured that we want to you know, be much cheaper than the cost of renting one. Because right? yeah. when you rent one, you only have it for, what, the day? Or do you get it the day before yeah, kind of thing? I'm not sure if they deliver it the day of or the day before. Probably yeah. I'm not sure, but hmm. it's a lot of money, regardless of if it's a day or two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if we can build something for cheaper than what the rental costs, then automatically it's paid for itself. And possibly, could you maybe rent this to other people or share it, at least share it with other people or use, maybe we can, you know, that would be up to you to think about. Mm. Maybe, uh, you know, you know somebody who, uh, I, I actually know somebody who, who, performs wedding ceremonies for example Mm -hmm. i wonder if i could call him up and say hey do you want to rent my photo booth for two hundred dollars instead of a thousand bucks i wonder if we could do that just a crazy thought build a business out of this one little build 
Yeah, well, I mean, if you have the equipment and you have your little model yeah. made up, then why not rent you've got, it out? You've got the specs that we kind of came up with. Yeah. And uh, now... Abigail and Kyle. Kyle is your fian- fiance, mm-hmm. and uh, we actually sat down uh, just a couple weeks ago and started hashing out how we wanted to do this. So really, just talking about okay, well, how are we going to design it? It's got to fit in the room. Uh, we know that the room is set up in such a way that we want one of the walls of the photo booth to be completely open. We're not going to build a door or anything like that, uh, just because of the way the the room is laid out. It works for us to have the uh the one wall completely open yeah so what did we come up with here we've we've come up with we decided to go with pvc i know that we had the discussion on a previous show with some viewers and and uh, you've been in touch with us on facebook and uh, and on our youtube channel and email um we we went with pvc it seemed like a, an economical solution i think uh we ended up with three quarter inch white pvc mm-hmm which you can get at any hardware store, which is brilliant. Yeah, and it's not big and clunky. Like it, it's it looks really nice. light. It looks nice. Yes, it's really really lightweight. Um, tonight we're actually going to show you the whole process of how we came up with the components. You saw us coming up with the design there, just sketching it out. Abigail's uh, good at doing the the kind of drawings and stuff, and I'll I'll uh, show you that a little bit closer in a little bit. Uh, but we're actually going to go step by step through the entire process. One of the things that we had to determine was the backdrop. I had shown you um, like a three-fold kind of room divider mm-hmm. at one point on the show, and said, so, you know, well, it's, it's a little bit dark. We'd probably have to paint it. It's not quite as nice as what you were looking for. So what were the kind of the decisions that went through your mind? What did we need to think about? Uh, well, cost efficiency, something that was going to look nice, yeah. but that wasn't going to be, like with the, the three folds, like that probably would have taken work to, like if we wanted to make it right. look more suited to the photo booth, depending on, because I know we were in one store and we saw one of those panels yeah. and I don't know, it's just flimsy, it's a little, little awkward, flimsy, yeah? easy to fall so over. If they get kind of nudged or something, you could have them just fall <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. To have something that, you know, we wanted to have a photo booth that was uh, five feet wide and ten feet deep. Yeah, and so. and when you think about a photo booth, there's they usually have kind of like a curtain, yeah. even in the doorway. So sure. just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just something like that is... Right. So for those who are wondering, you know, what's the p- purpose in a photo booth, what would you say, like, wh- why do you want to have a photo booth at your wedding reception? Entertainment. I guess yeah. people have something to do. It'll be fun. I'll have pictures of all the guests and everything, and then yeah. I can send the guest pictures, some goofy ones and yeah, maybe some serious yeah. ones as yeah. well. But I think it'll just it'll be a good memory of the wedding and right. people have fun doing it as well. So yeah, and you never know what you're going to come up with. I think after the wedding, it'll be fun to go through all of those <laughs> and uh, and be able to to see them. Yeah. Rev D. Jank is wondering if we're going to actually record audio during the process as well. And we hadn't really thought about audio. We talked about maybe having the video record, mm-hmm. which we can still do. We're going to do everything with, with real cheap components. We're going to use a webcam. We're going to use, uh, like I say, the PVC pipe and just a laptop computer that we already have to make mm-hmm. it happen. Um, audio is certainly a possibility. I mean, that's super, super small. You could just install Goldwave from goldwave.com press record and let it go kind of thing yeah so that might be a consideration what would be better video or just i think well it it depends on what you want to do really the pictures are really the key thing for a wedding the the pictures make it easier to you know have like a hard copy like if you want to put it in like a scrapbook or something and then to send the guests as well yeah but i think the video would be fun because then they could leave you like Like a a message or something and it would also be funny because you'd probably get a lot of uh unscripted little clips in there sure, from your yeah. guests. Rev D. Jank mentions. Now, Rev D. Jank, I should mention, the Rev portion of the alias probably has a little bit more experience with weddings than any of us here. Uh, says they could maybe use that opportunity to leave their blessings or even to mm-hmm. uh, uh, to sing a song or something goofy like that. Yeah. Might be a, a fun opportunity for, for you to get some other stuff. So t- for tonight's feature, I love the ideas, by the way, Rev D. Jank. Thank you. Um, for tonight's feature, we're going to be looking specifically at the photographic end of things, and we're going to leave it up to you to, to get creative with the rest of it, uh, because you know we're, we're, we're going to start here, and then what you want to do with it from here is totally up to you, and we'll probably end up changing some things, too, Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and adding some features to it. Trial and error. <laughs> yeah, messing around, and, and it's a chance for us to kind of work out the kinks as well, mm-hmm. so a lot of fun. So we're thinking about, okay, well, we've got to go get some curtains to make this thing work, so... Here we go. 
Abigail and Kyle going shopping in downtown Barry here. And we found some pretty good deals, eh? Like, what did, what did you end up spending on curtains? Let's let's kind of think through how much this cost. Uh, they were only, I think, five dollars. Five bucks a panel, and you needed. And we got seven panels. Seven. Altogether. There they are for ten bucks. I think there. the two white ones were a bit more money. Right. They may have been ten each or seven each. Yeah. There's so many sales. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But um, are you going to iron the curtains? Jot wants to know. No. No, he didn't. No. No. <laughs> no, he wanted to say no. No, no. <laughs> so we've got 25 bucks in the in the darker curtains. There they are, because those are 5 bucks a pop. And how much did you think the white ones were? They were either 7 or 10. I don't think they were 5. But, okay, uh, so do we want to say like 45 bucks in cur- invested in curtains? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we know that we've got $45 worth of curtains. Oh, and there's that that uh, threefold that you had yeah had seen, uh, and, and see, it's, that's it's gone 30, down in price. And that's it's thirty dollars. So we're paying forty five bucks curtains? for all the curtains. Yeah, because that we would wasn't probably that need wide. like oh yeah, that was only about five feet wide if you extended it, but then it becomes flimsy. So yeah. you'd need like you'd need several of those in order to make it work. Yeah, which I don't think would work in this case. So I think you're right. Curtains are probably the way to go. PVC is definitely a uh, a good idea. One of the concerns that you had was, you know, are the are the is the PVC going to fit through the grommets of the curtain? And that's why we decided on three quarter inch uh, piping, because you were thinking along the lines of, you know, the 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 uh, plumbing um, PVC that I had in my mind that hideous black. Yeah, well, it could be it could be six <laughs> inches wide, right? It's the the plumbing that you see if you if you go into an unfinished basement, and you yeah. see it under all the toilets, right? That's what she was envisioning. So, no, 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 we're we're going with a nice white um, PVC that's a three quarter yeah. inch yeah. in diameter, so very very fine, and the curtains fit through just fine mm-hmm. as far as the grommets go and, and things like that. And you can't really tell, but the the white curtains have a really nice texture to them, so they, d- mm. they don't look like a shower curtain. They look like a nice right, right. a nice piece of material. Yeah, so. no, and I can see them here. Um, definitely, they do look uh, quite nice. We visited our friends at Allendale Home Hard- Hardware Building Center here in Barrie. Uh, they're at 200 Minettes Point Road uh, in Barrie, Ontario. I encourage you to go check them out there. Uh, you know, I went in there because I know I've been in there a few times and I've talked to Sean in the plumbing department. He knows his stuff and he's not opposed to uh, thinking outside of the box. And really that's what we needed when we were thinking about how are we going to build this thing Mm -hmm. because we don't have a prefab way of doing this and we want to keep it cheap. We want to go with you know the whole idea of PVC versus going out and buying muslin stands, for example, that could be $100 or $200 a piece Mm -hmm. and you need to put them all around you. Uh, it could be very, very expensive yep. to go that route, and we had talked about that as well. So yep. looking at PVC, I thought, okay, well, Sean at Allendale Home Hardware Building Center is going to be the guy to talk to. Um, so we went over there, and he was perfectly willing to help us. Um, so let's uh, let's hop over there. Through the magic of television, we're going to go back in time a little <laughs> bit and uh, to the other side of Barry. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, Allendale uh, Home Hardware Building Center. Alkalines from EcoAlkalines.com. And this is for when Abby lost her keys in the car. Hey, that's you now that your battery died on that thing. Something. Wish they had like a horse or something. Hi, everybody. Can I help you? Hi. Um, yeah, we're, we're here to build a photo booth out of PVC pipe. I wonder if you could help us. Sure. You most definitely just follow me and we'll okay. see what we got going on. Great. Thank you. So out of PVC, so we're making a, as you say, a photo booth. So it is just a, is it a freestanding stand? Um, it is, yes. We connect it at the corners. Uh, basically, the sides are going to be, we'll need maybe about 10 five-foot lengths. So okay. 10 foot cut in half. Okay. Um, I guess we go from there. We go from there. Yeah. This is what we're going to deal with today. We're going to deal with white PVC. Awesome. Okay. And I can also show you where the pipe is, so we can get, get all that. Look, that's tax manifold. Yes, I do, right down here on the bottom. On your right, Brian, just stepping in on the other side of the cabinet. Okay, and this is where we're gonna grab all our, all our PVC pipe. Okay, great. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, nine at five feet. And then we'll have two at the 10 feet still. Like the, the this one and this so one don't need, need to be cut, but this, 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 this. So we need, and that needs to be five. so that means this would be two, two times that in five foot. So we need four, so we need 13 all together, five feet. I mean, 11, 11, 11 pieces all together. 11 10 footers? Okay. No. This would be, this is gonna use, because it's an odd number, it's gonna use five, and mm -hmm. we're gonna have extra. Sure. That's fine. So we need, two of them can stay at 10 feet, they don't need to be cut for this and this. And then the um, other nine pieces will be cut. So we'll have to use five 10 foots and then cut those, and then we'll just have an extra 10, or five feet. Exactly what she said. <laughs> Okay guys, now what we're going to have to do is, to make this corner, if you actually did, because we have to make such a, an odd looking corner. So, if I went like this to this, so I would get in my corners. You could actually, because because it doesn't go in, you can just put a screw right there. Where about? Right, right, right dead in the center there. So we will, oh, so we'll make a 90, right? And it does not affect the pipe, because the pipe will not go into that corner. Okay. I just gotta go get a drill and a drill bit so we can pre-drill pre this and we'll just put a little screw into it and we will assemble it. Not a very safe way of doing it. I'm not doing it. There should be half things in a little vise or something like that. but. Right now, we're improvising. Oh, this fits here perfectly. Yeah, that'll be a good length. So now we know that you are less than five feet tall, Abby. <laughs> that, that is not very nice. So it's 3D. It is, yeah. <laughs> Um. Job 80% complete. Wow. Four. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And Abigail Smith. <laughs> Abigail Smith. So tonight we're building a uh, an actual photo booth. And uh, yes. starting from the ground up, from the design all the way through to completion. So uh, thank you very much to uh, the wonderful people at Allendale Home Hardware Building Center at 200 Minutes Point uh, Road in Barrie, Ontario. They just are amazing uh, helpful people there and uh, and really helped us to kind of envision the design as well and and truth be told I went in and talked to to Sean a few times beforehand and just kind of ran bounced some ideas around him uh, with him and mm -hmm. and he gave me some ideas as to how this could be done so very cool stuff so as I mentioned uh, in the video you saw that we were starting with I think like a one inch pipe but we went down to a three quarter inch yeah. uh, at some point during during the planning and that had to do with just making sure that we had all the right joints and things like that uh, and quite happy with the three-quarter inch uh, pipe anyways yeah, because it's it very looks, very light yeah yeah it looks great it's, and i was amazed at how easy they just put oh, yeah. it together and a it's, couple minutes it later literally 
literally builds itself, folks. This is our studio. We've got it all put together. There it goes. It just <laughs> literally puts itself together. It's so uber simple. Wow. <sighs> and uh, it, uh, it, it works great. It looks great. So we went with five, all five foot lengths. So these are 10 foot poles all cut in half. And there we go. All set. Ready to go with our photo booth. So are you ready to try this out and actually get a sense for how this is going to work? You ready to use cheese? Cheese, my favorite program. <laughs> I want to start the segment uh, tonight as we get into the technology behind how this is going to work. I wanted to start with something that's open source, that's free, that's available for Linux. And that's where cheese comes in. Cheese is a really great piece of software um, it, that will let us run. Everybody's la laughing about the name Cheese because of what happened on the last episode of Category 5. If you missed it with Abigail here when we were talking about Cheese, it was a bit of a giggle fest. But we got through and we found that Cheese is actually a very viable uh, software solution to, to making this work. Yeah. So I'm going to bring that up on my system here in Ubuntu. There we go. Hey, Kyle, <laughs> smile. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So with cheese, uh, now Kyle is, of course, on the camera. Uh, we are uh, in the studio uh, in front of him. So the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to change this to burst mode. Okay, that's as we uh, had found in the one episode that that is what we're going to do for... Uh, uh, to ma basically make it operate like a photo booth. You go through preferences and make sure your photo resolution is as high as it can go. Now we have chosen to go with the Microsoft Life Cam Studio Camera because it does a full true 1080p, 1920 by 1080. And that little camera works very, very well and uh, is available for only 60 bucks. So I happen to have, you know, I always have a few of these bad boys laying around the studio. There they are. It's like this. And what's really, really nice about this, for one, it's 1080p, true 1080p, but also it has uh, a tripod mounting, mm -hmm. uh, s s uh, what do you call it, like a nut there, so that you can actually mount that directly on a tripod and it's very maneuverable because it, it has the flex neck here and it can go left and right and up and down. So you can really maneuver it well. Uh, but it's only about 60 bucks. You can get one from cat5.tv slash cam. That's C-A-M, short for camera. Uh, make sure you go uh, grab yourself one of those for your photo booth. Like I said, I already had a couple of them laying around, so our cost, we didn't have to add that. Mm. But I'm going to add that just for you so that we know how much this is costing. So another $60 uh, to our photo booth. Okay. So on uh, cheese... Just uh, set up, you know, things like countdown is important to our photo booth. Fire flash is important to our photo booth just for the effect and how many photos you want it to take and how much delay between the burst photos. So I've set it for four photos uh, with a uh, delay of one second. So, uh, Abigail, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get you to actually uh, step over there with Kyle and uh, I'm going to come over and set up your camera for you. <laughs> I will get there yeah. eventually. <laughs> 11 minutes later. All right, so let's get this all set up. I'm going to give you guys some light over here. Now, this is the other <laughs> thing is that we have like studio lighting here that uh, that you may not have access to at home. You can buy these from uh, pretty much any photo store. Uh, but you can use just a, like a, a table lamp or something like that will do as well. Um, get like a flood lamp or something along those lines, which you could also get at Allendale Home Hardware or your, your local hardware store. I'm going to switch back over to uh, to the webcam there and hit F11 to make this full screen. And we'll just kind of adjust the, yeah. the location of the camera. Now, I'm limited in this particular environment to uh, the length of cable that I have. I would probably want the camera to be a little bit closer to you so there's a little bit better cropping there. Now, if you could hold up the green button that uh, that we have there, just to show the viewers at home what uh, what you have. This is the USB uh, <laughs> USB button from literally usbbutton.com, and this device is available for under thirty dollars. And it is, in fact, a, I've got it set to green, which is your wedding color. Um, so, do you want to uh, just give that a quick tap? Do the honors. Okay. I don't think I hit it properly. Here you go. Ooh, do you see that? It went purple. 
Did it go purple? It went purple. Okay, push that for me. There you go. Okay, it says taking pictures. Two, <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, again? Yeah, it takes four of them. <laughs> one second intervals. <laughs> there we go. So that's that's cheese, and that's really where <laughs> cheese gets cheese. you to. So um, cheese doesn't... Now, I've lost part of my light, so you understand why that is. Cheese doesn't show you the photos on the screen. So in order to actually see them, you'd have to then uh, go over to your computer, and you'd, ha- you'd probably have to do this, because we're doing this without having a mouse anywhere near the computer, because we don't want them to be able to click on things or anything like that. So I go into webcam, and I can see that there are the pictures, <laughs> and, they're, and they're really good quality. There you go. And those will all make it to the show notes and our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Attractive. <laughs> <laughs> So that works pretty good. Um, thoughts about cheese? It's free. <laughs> Let me tell you about cheese. <laughs> the software is free. It's available for you in the repositories of your favorite Linux distribution. So definitely recommend that you check that out if you're looking for you know, a really cheap solution. The next option, Abigail, is to actually step things up a little bit and go with uh, some commercial software. So what I was thinking about doing is you know possibly looking at uh, some of the options that were out there and one of them that is probably the best uh, that I've been able to find is called Spark Booth and the disadvantage to Spark Booth is simply that it requires Microsoft Windows if if that can be considered a disadvantage and as a Linux user I would say that it kind of is but (laughs) that said I'm able to boot up a virtual machine using Oracle VirtualBox which is free software. So if you have a Windows 7 license or Windows XP or anything like that, you can install it into Linux. You see that I am indeed using Linux, but I'm using Microsoft Windows as my, uh, the operating system is booting up right now. So that's an interesting use case. But of course, in our situation, we're going to be using a laptop, and that laptop already has Windows 7 on it. Um, so we're happy to, to simply go that route. So I'm just going to load right into the uh, Windows system here and open Sparkbooth 3.7, which I've already installed. Sparkbooth is a commercial application, as I say, but there is a free version that's available for you to download and try. The software itself, uh, if you want to purchase the full version, is $60. If you're going to be using this for your wedding or whatever, then I would suggest if this is the route you're going to go as opposed to cheese, um, $60 is not a lot to spend and to add to the bill. And it, it does a really, really good job, as you're going to see. So I'm just going to load that up. Again, this is called Spark Booth. You can get it at cat5.tv slash sparkbooth. S-P-A-R-K-B-O-O-T-H. Now, one of the things that's neat about Spark Booth is that it's themable. That's cool. So you see this, Abigail? It's I've already set it up really as cool. a just married, and it's kind of cute. It's in your wedding colors, um, and it's it's basically built for for your wedding Mm -hmm. at this point um very customizable there you go almost ready get ready so well let's let's before you actually push the green button let's bring up our settings and and see um what kind of settings are available here in spark booth because i'd like you to see the difference between cheese and this uh and they are pretty stark um, this is a commercial application. Sixty dollars gets you a really good uh, high-end <laughs> commercial tool to to be able to do a photo booth. Um, so we're going to bring up the settings here. It's coming. Smile for us, guys. <laughs> So you can see that, uh, well, as I'm not sure what's, uh, what's going on there, that hasn't happened before, but that's okay. You're laughing over there. There we go. There, okay. The settings are up. Now, because I'm running this as a virtual machine, I'll just note it's not as good as a native environment as far as if I were to put um, this on the laptop itself with Windows 7 as the main operating system. I'm using a virtual machine because here on the air we don't have a Windows system that I could actually run this on. Um, So this is a really, really good kind of hack around. So in the settings window, which have now come up, you can find, you know, photo layouts. I'm going to do a a one by four strip um, just because that's kind of traditional. Mm -hmm. Sound good, Abigail? Awesome. All right. Perfect. Do you want sound? Absolutely. 
Um, do you want to hide the mouse cursor? Probably, yeah, because uh, you know we're using uh, a touch button as opposed to a mouse. The theme that you want to use, and we've got, you know, I've already set it to the wedding. Um, the photo preview, uh, preview, how you want it to actually come out. You want it to be random or slide in or photo drop or whatever you want it to do. We'll just leave it as random just for fun. How long you want the previews to last and so on and so forth. Keyboard shortcuts, spacebar is uh, is going to actually take the photo or enter. So keep in mind that with our USB button from usbbutton.com, we've already programmed that to be a spacebar. So that's how this is able to work for us. Uh, so that's very, very cool. Um, now you can go through each of the settings, configure all this stuff up, photo effects. Feel free to go through. I'm just skimming through. Add your own voice so that you can be like, and now it's time to take your photo. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Can you imagine just everyone hearing from behind the curtain? And now it's time to take a photo. <laughs> it's just like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, how you want uh, the guests to be prompted. If you want to include a keyboard, you can have them prompted for their name, for example, for their email address. Um, you can ask them if they want to print it. You can have a printer connected. And you see under printing, we can actually set this up to automatically print uh, as soon as their photo session is done, which is kind of a nice little keepsake for mm -hmm. them. But then under saving, I've also said, you know what, I'm going to save this in a folder in documents called Spark Booth. And I've said, I want to save not only the four, uh, the one by four. Mm, Zoom sometimes messes up when I'm doing there. Okay. Not only do I want to save the one by four, but I also want to save the individual photos. That's what I've selected there so that we've got the full resolution. Okay. Really nice thing is that uh, here's another great feature for you. Do you want to automatically up? upload the photos as they're taken. If your computer for your photo booth is going to have an internet connection, check this out, you can uh, automatically have it post the photos to Facebook or to Flickr or any of these. That's cool. Right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? It's so TwitPic. Have it automatically post. But if you're, you know, you're, you're having your wedding and you can automatically have these photos going up on your Facebook wedding page, for example, um, really cool. during the actual event as people are taking them. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, so you can see already that how this is um, quite a step up from cheese as far as feature set goes. You'll notice that I've changed the starting text to say press green button. Mm -hmm. That's not by default. I know yeah. that I'm putting a green button in front of them, so I want to make the description really, really easy. Abigail and I, you, we had talked about maybe we need to put up a sign or something, right? Yeah, but, I'm going to create a sign. Signage. And that's cool. But here on the screen, I can actually <laughs> give the instructions and I can say press green button or... Press the space bar if you don't have a green button, oh, for right. example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't press the red button. Yeah, so everything <laughs> is there. I've changed it to widescreen as well because I've got a 1080p webcam. I want to get the best resolution out of that as possible, so I'm not going to crop it to square. I'm going to give me the, uh, the full widescreen mode. So let's close that and uh, make sure that's the active window. And this is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, your actual photo session. So Abigail, sitting in the photo studio with her husband-to-be, Kyle, let's press the green button, shall we? Ready? Mm-hmm. Let's see how it works. Okay. Press it. Okay. <laughs> now the flicker, I believe, is, is due to the virtual machine as well. Oh, and sorry. Okay. Now press it again. Okay. Ready? That's my fault. Go ahead. Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go again. Yeah. That's four in a row. And another. So angry. One more. <laughs> I moved too slowly. <laughs> and there you go. So that, unlike cheese, your guests are actually going to get to see. A preview of what their photos turned out like. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, like motionless. I know. All right, so that's that is program. that's Spark Booth. That is uh, from Cat5.tv/sparkbooth, and uh, then it. Thank you. There you go. You're welcome. And so your session is done, and now you can step out, and it's the next person's turn kind of idea. So, Abigail, if you'd like to join me back on the uh, studio Excuse set me. here. 
This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to the show, Category 5.TV. Abigail, if you could just turn that light for me as you come. Ooh, and uh, do. that will bring us some light in the studio here, nice and dark. Oh, just, just turn the head of it. That's oh. all. You don't need to move the stand. There you go. Perfect. I'm going to get blinded. Ah, it's like, ah. it's like a sunrise. <laughs> There you go. Is that Thanks, Abigail. Right? Yeah, that's You're welcome. Way. Yeah. I need a <laughs> tissue for my issue. If you don't have studio lights like that for your photo booth, all you need to do is just, like I say, get a uh, like a student lamp or something that you would get for your desk. One that you can put a floodlight bulb in mm-hmm. and just set it back far enough um, that uh, it's not going to be, you know, creating huge amounts of glare off of the people that are getting their photos taken. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. What'd you do? I don't know what I did. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts? <laughs> it's like pressing into the back of yeah. my head. Better? Good. All right. Thanks, Abigail. So what do you think? It was awesome. I really like the, um, oh, what's it? Spo- spark spark booth. Yeah. Spark booth. Yeah. I really like that because it shows you the pictures and it talks to you, I that like kind that. of thing. Yeah. Um, however, cheese is free. Yeah. <laughs> and $60 is a fair amount. Compared to, you know, when you think about all of our drapes were $45. Yeah. So $60 to add that to the bill. I think it's nice because it gives the guests a chance to see the pictures. Because right. maybe they want to take them again. Because if you notice, there were some pictures where I was like, I wasn't ready for the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so if they have the time, they yeah. can like, but yeah. The other thing is that with with that, you can set it up to print. So you say about how, how it's nice for them to be able to see their photos on the screen. But even being able to just plug in a photo printer which are dirt cheap these days mm. and have it spew out on photo paper yeah and then they can just cut them out afterwards or whatever to get the crop lines right or whatever mm-hmm. and uh i think that's yeah, there's lots brilliant. of different ways that you can different mm-hmm. options that you can do for the photo booth depending on your event or what you yeah how fancy schmancy you want it to be or? exactly so where are we at so we've got the ha- news well, n- no, I mean, we're not, we're not moving on just yet. Okay, we've spent $45 on the curtains, $60 on a camera. We spent about... From cat5.tv slash cam. At Home Hardware. Yeah. We spent about, I believe it was 67 PVC piping and all the accessories that we needed from there, $67. Was there anything else that we got from there? I don't think so. That was it. Was literally just the the pipe work just the and pipe stuff. Pipe work. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and what else have we invested in this so far? That's really uh, you know the USB button at thirty dollars. Hooks. Yeah. Those well, I did. Those were. Yeah, and they're not really. I don't know if you can see on camera, but I did pr- pick up just behind the lamp on your right there. You see a couple of hooks. I don't know, Kyle, if you could just pick one up and show uh, those hooks. I just picked up at a, a dollar store or something, and they're they're pretty great. Just so that you can. Um, oh yeah, if you want to hand one to me, just so that what the thought was is, well, you'd like to be able to put um, Christmas lights or something around the outside just to make it look nicer. So I just picked up some of those, or even to hang a sign that says like photo booth or something, sure. like signage or whatever. Just makes yeah. it easier People to attach. People can hang their stuff. coat on it. You know, what, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will. It's it's awfully solid. It really is, um, and I think that's because of the the U shape design of it. Yeah. And the, as you saw, the joints in the corners, the three, the ones that we needed to, to have Sean screw the, the, uh, the one end on, mm-hmm. they're solid. Like, they're not, the, the, the stuff can't turn or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's, it's a solid kind of connector. Yeah. So, okay. So, you want to add this up and figure out, okay, so we've got, figure out how much we've actually, how much this is costing to build a photo booth. There you go. Math is not my subject. So this is the this is the as you would have realized. The moment of truth, folks. We had budgeted about two hundred bucks. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, originally. And what did it and sixty? When you say sixty-seven, was that tax in? That was a tax in. I think. Okay. I think this was before. So that's tax, inflated though. by thirteen percent. Mm-hmm. Because that's Ontario. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're, <laughs> we're literally at two hundred bucks, two hundred and two dollars after tax with the uh, for the PVC because she added the thirteen percent in in there. Um, so that's really really good. Uh, so from a thousand dollars for a rental to two hundred dollars for build it do it yourself. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. <laughs> I, th- I think we pulled it off. What do you yeah. think, folks? How's that look to you? And uh, do you think that that's a, a usable design? Uh, what what we're gonna do? I'm actually going to. Um, post the design specs, everything like that, 
uh, in the show notes of episode number 286. Um, as well, you're going to have access to those through my blog at baldnerd.com, everything like that. And uh, it is actually, there were seven uh, th- three-quarter inch pipes all cut in half. So thir- it was 13 yes, five-foot pieces altogether. Yes, I calculated wrong. I calculated correctly. <laughs> 13 pieces all together and then all the joints and stuff. So we'll actually draw that out for you and post that for you if you want to build something similar. But, I mean, it was so easy to, to put together and, and build and that. And to take apart. And it, it's so compact when you, mm-hmm. like, it's going to be so when easy it's folded to get down, to the yeah. You the wrap reception. it up and the, yeah. the pipes are like this and they weigh like five pounds and you just throw it in the back of a car. It's only five feet. Yeah. And all of the all of the ends and, and joiners and everything uh, all fit into a, like a shopping bag. Yeah. So... I was worried that it was going to take a long time to set up the night before, and I'm like, oh, it's just one more thing. But it's it's like five minutes. (laughs) Tear down. We're going to be tearing it down uh, after the show tonight. So if you want to watch on uh, either Backstage Pass or Google Hangouts, you'll be able to see how easy this is to tear down. Very cool stuff. I'm pleased with that. Are you pleased with that? I am. Yeah. It's great. I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. All right, so now. (laughs) Now. Yeah, hey, there's an idea. Rev D. Jenks says, hey, you could use that for puppet shows later. Yeah. Just short of ideas. It. Yeah. Yeah. I think that looks really good. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Abigail. Yeah. It's a fun project. Yeah. If you have any feedback, fun. any thoughts for us, uh, email us live at category5.tv. Uh, we'd love to know what you think. And uh, also join us at category5.tv. Love to have you there. All right, Abigail. Great. Take it's her away. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to laugh this time because yeah. this is serious. This is very serious. It's intense. <clears throat> this is a serious show. I gotta clear my throat even. Is that serious? Mm-hmm. So, in Category 5.tv newsroom tonight, on Thursday, the Intel Open Source Technology Center released the first public version of the Intel graphics drivers for Linux. It currently supports Ubuntu 12.04 and 12.10 and Fedora 17 and 18 and the source code is also available for those who are a little more daring. The Intel Linux graphics installer allows you to easily install the latest graphics drivers for your Intel graphics hardware. This allows you to stay current with the latest enhancements, optimizations and fixes to ensure the best user experience with your Intel graphics hardware. Cool. Ongoing, on, ongoing problems with the latest version of SimCity led Amazon to stop selling the game just two days after it was released. SimCity has always been a standalone game, but EA has added the requirement of an internet connection to infuse the title with more realism. Now cities exist as part of online regions and share some characteristic, characteristics of those virtual environments such as pollution, crime, and essential resources. The online requirement is also seen as an attempt to curb piracy of the title as a web connection is required even if a player shuns the chance to connect their cities to others. Hmm. However, the requirement for all players of the game to be connected has led some to wait 30 minutes or more to play. Yikes. That wouldn't be fun. Gamers, <laughs> no. The server problems have led to sluggish response times, crashes, and other bugs. To lighten the load on its back-end servers, EA turned off some features including leaderboards and achievements. It has also been removed <laughs> it has also removed the option to run the game at its fastest setting, known as cheetah speed. Instead, all cities will now run at the lower speed of llama speed. <laughs> llama speed. <laughs> yeah. I literally just pictured some higher up at, Ma- I don't know who makes that now, uh, EA, I guess. I was going to say Maxim. Uh, SimCity saying, we'll let you play, but you cannot achieve anything. Wow. Have you seen this game, though? I mean, it no. looks spectacular. What's- Wow. Wow. Crazy. I remember playing SimCity when it was just like little dots on the, the it dirt literally was background. Little dots. <laughs> remember Pac Man? That's, you know, it, when, when SimCity first came out, I was one of the first players and loved it. Well, now, I was the it's, first it's player. Like, it's 3D. It is. You were the first player. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So if you can get in after a half hour wait, what they were saying, though, is it, what's interesting is that people who would make the wait were enjoying it so much that they would not sign off and that's why there was so much Mm. draw on the servers because people were playing it endlessly which is understandable right you're building your city and you're building all of these like 3d that's it's crazy wow it's come so far sure has wow 
uh, next in news, Ubuntu GNOME has officially accepted, has been officially accepted into the Ubuntu family. This is exciting to me. <laughs> I, I, I prefer GNOME over Unity, for sure. Becoming an official flavor means that the project will now benefit from access to infrastructure support and technical publicity from Canonical... Canonical? Uh, can- <laughs> canonical. <laughs> canonical. That, that particular Freudian slur... <laughs> May, it may it took a minute for me to get <laughs> and the Ubuntu Canonical, community yeah. originally called Gnome Ubuntu the Ubuntu Gnome project aims to provide users with as pure a Gnome experience as possible on Ubuntu nice the next release expected in April will be based on Gnome 3.6 hmm. though Gnome 3.8 will be available for installation from a project maintained PPA very cool Amongst all the latest generation technology, it's interesting to see one spring up that uses optical concepts hundreds of years old. The Palm Top Theater is an iPhone case that turns smartphone videos into a miniature 3D viewing experience. The peripheral utilizes three small drop-down displays. The rear is a full mirror with two half mirrors in front, reflecting images from the phone's display, creating an illusion of what appears to be a three-dimensional object. And according to those who have seen it firsthand, the experience is quite stunning. In order to create the 3D effect, a propriety video file format is required, which splits the displayed image or video into three parts. A converter app is provided to allow you to create the effect on your existing videos. The Palm Top Theater is available now for under $40. Really? It's that cheap? Really, really. But what we all want to know is, will it bring Tupac back? <laughs> it sounds exactly like the technology that they're using, right? It's yeah. almost like a, it's almost like using parallaxing or some some sort of um, multiple leveled uh, screens. But I wonder. I noticed that in all of the snapshots and everything that I've seen of this thing, uh, everything is kind of like these figures and things. Nothing is a real movie. And I wonder if if an, an actual video would mm-hmm, work mm-hmm. or if it's really just these kind of fractal looking things. So that that would be interesting. It'd be interesting to see. I guess it's like it was more popular than it'll be more Yeah, and, and it's certainly a bit of a gimmick, right? I mean, how many people need to be able to sit there watching a 3D movie on a little... It looks like it, the way that it goes, your phone goes in Some as people well. live off their iPhones. <laughs> I know, but looking at, at the way that your phone goes in, too. So it's not the width of your screen. Mm-hmm. It's the high, It's It goes this way. So I, I, what is that, an inch and a half? Maybe two yeah, inches? Yeah, so my screen inches. is literally like a couple inches wide. Yeah. I guess, so it would be, I guess it would be interesting to see just for even just little clips. Yeah, like, a, oh, like yeah. a smaller portion. It would, sure like, it would cool. just be neat to see what it looks like, like the technology. It, but it's a bit of a fad. Like I would think that, yeah. oh wow, that's really really cool. And then it would sit on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. And it was, you know, but for forty bucks, I mean, you, you go to the movie a couple times and you've already spent that. But it, that's that's kind of a neat little gadget, anyway. Mm-hmm. Huh? How but cool! You can get the full stories at category five TV slash newsroom. The Category 5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of an on-air mention, let me or someone else, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Abigail Smith. Thank you, Abigail. Hey, check out Cordery Electric, CorderyElectric.com. They're one of our sponsors tonight, and they provide our electrical work here at Category 5, and we suggest that if you're in the Barrie area, uh, make sure you check them out, because uh, anywhere in central Ontario, they'll be able to do uh, some electrical work for you, and they're a fantastic bunch of guys. Uh, also, Netflix, cat5.tv slash Netflix. Uh, you can get your free one-month trial. I'd encourage you to give that a go, and uh, I, I guarantee you, you're going to love it. Absolutely. And uh, no strings attached, right? You can cancel at any time. Also, tonight's show is brought to you in part by NetTalk Duo. Find out more about them at cat5.tv slash phone. And I encourage you to check that out. There's more information there. You've seen it on the show for the past couple of weeks, uh, but certainly a great way to save money because this replaces your phone service and uh, allows you to call anywhere in North America, Canada, the United States, absolutely free. Uh, And uh, you can't beat that. No, save no. like up to a thousand bucks a year so that's net talk duo and duo wi-fi uh, duo wi-fi from cat5.tv slash phone all right loads of stuff to cover tonight it's it's been fun so far i hope everyone's having fun at home um what do you think 
I I don't know if uh, some of you have already noticed. I see Chris Reich. Yeah, buddy. Um, some in the chat room are, are noticing as well that I've switched to Ubuntu. Mm-hmm. And this is 12.10. And I did this uh, because... I was having some trouble with Compiz anywhere else. And strangely enough, right, Ubuntu would be the one that solves all the Compiz <laughs> problems. But out of the box, Ubuntu didn't really have a lot um, set up for it as far as Compiz effects or anything like that, which is cool. We can, we can fix that. Um, so just wanted to, you know, one of the things that we do here at the show that's really, really important to us is being able to zoom in on things. Right. If I bring up a website, and people have said to me, to me before, well, how do you do that? Because you know, if you're watching this on your little 3D iPhone, <laughs> for example, and it really, really helps that I'm able to do that for you because I can make that text readable on any device. Sure, if you're watching this on a 52-inch TV, you can see it like that. But for those of you at home who don't have that ability, that really helps. So that's called Enhanced Desktop Zoom. It's a feature of Ubuntu if it has comp. It's a feature of Linux with Compiz. It's a plugin for Compiz, which is a compositing manager and and desktop effects and windowing manager and all that stuff. It does a lot of very, very cool things. But unfortunately, it's kind of at end of life. And so we're starting to see different different versions of Linux that it's really, really hard to get a good working version of Compiz these days. It's unfortunate. Um, But with Ubuntu, it obviously works. But out of the box, there is no no enhanced desktop Mm -hmm. zoom. Mm -hmm. We really needed that. So I figure that you may want that as well. Easy way to activate that in Ubuntu 12.10 is to go into Software Center. And uh, we're going to install something called Compiz Configs, uh, Com- Compiz Config Settings Manager, and that's going to allow us to modify the settings that we need to modify. So just do a quick search for Compiz Config, and you'll see it there. Highlight it and click on Install, and literally takes just a moment to install. Not going to take long at all. And this application be very very careful with it. You can break everything. I'm going to show you something that's not going to have the possibility of breaking things. This is not one of those cases where I'm going to say, click around and experiment. You don't want to do that with Compass Config Settings Manager. So now launch it. The first time you launch it, I've already launched it before, um, so you'll, you'll get a warning, but it warns you that it's dangerous. Go do a search for Zoom and bring up Enhanced Desktop Zoom, and you'll see that it is enabled down at the bottom left there, but Zoom In is disabled so we're going to enable that and we're going to click on the super button that's the windows key on your keyboard and change the drop down to button four that's the up scroll wheel and then hit okay now for zoom out we need a way to zoom out as well Uh, click on disabled and go super button five which is the scroll wheel down button and now we've got the ability to zoom in and out just by holding our super key, our Windows key, and using the up and down scroll wheel. So that's fantastic. One of the things with Ubuntu is that when you hold in the Windows button, sometimes it brings up that helpful dialog that shows you all the hotkeys. So we're going to actually change that behavior. Type in Unity into the search, and go to Experimental, and scroll down a little ways. You'll see one that says um, down here somewhere, Enable uh, Shortcut Hints Overlay. We just have to turn that off. There we go. And that's literally all there is to it. We're good to go. And now we've got that very, very cool effect that allows us to zoom in and out on our Mm -hmm. desktop. And it works really, really great for doing what we do because we want to be able to zoom in. Yeah. yeah. And people would say, oh, well, we don't really need Compiz anymore. But there are use cases, and we're one of them, where zooming in is a really, really helpful tool. Another really good use for enhanced desktop zoom, which is available in Compiz and Wayland, uh, is for accessibility people who have really poor eyesight there are magnifying glass tools that allow you to have a little you know little section of your screen dedicated so that as you mouse over stuff it would zoom it in there Mm -hmm. but you can see that the usability of this feature being able to actually physically zoom in on your applications is much more useful uh, from an accessibility standpoint as well Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be hugely missed. But in the meantime, 12.10 Ubuntu, uh, we've got that working just fine. Really easy to set it up. Cool? 
Yeah. Any questions okay. in the chat room? We love to uh, we love to hear from you here. Category Five TV. We're uh, I can't believe that the time is gone. How did that even happen? It's like seconds. we hit a time warp, folks. I hope that you had a great time tonight. I sure did. You have fun. Me too. Of course I did. Yeah. We were talking about cheese. Cheese. Say cheese, folks. Hope that you have a fantastic week. Next week, we have Rachel Shu joining us back here in the studio. It's been a long, long time since we've had her as a uh, co-host on the show. She is uh, is back from her time away, so uh, don't miss it. We're going to be talking with Bogdan Oros, and uh, we're going to be talking about his new uh, company that allows you to communicate with your customers in real time through their cell phones. So if you uh, if you own a company, this is an opportunity for you to get a really cool app that your customers can just scan uh, QR code and be able to provide reviews of your services and things like that. So everybody have a fantastic week. Abigail, can you help me tear this thing down? Yes, I right. will. All right. No, I'm just going to leave it up for you to do <laughs> all by yourself. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Thanks, Abigail. Night. Thanks, Kyle. And thank you to, uh, to Allendale Home Hardware again as well. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local show times in your area at category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.